everybody in this video I'm going to walk you through how to calculate standard deviation and actually maybe in this video I'm probably just going to talk about what standard deviation is and at least give you some insight um, that will help you understand these values that we're coming up with so this is for introduction to engineering design and uh, let's let's start with this just a simple basic this is obviously not a fully flushed out definition but a basic definition of standard deviation is it's a number it's going to tell us how spread out our measured values are so the bigger this number is when we do these calculations in a little bit the bigger the number is that means the more spread out the data is in other words it's a way to quantify since we've been talking about precision and accuracy in our classes it's a way to quantify what the precision is okay how precise are we whenever we are making measurements okay so if we get a bunch of say for instance tightly clustered measurements so we have a bunch of values that are all towards the center um, you know, like whenever we took measurements with dial calipers of the passenger section of our T9 vehicles, okay, and our measurements varied, but, you know, you're talking by a couple hundredths of an inch, okay, that means that almost all the values are the same. Those things were not spread out at all. We had nobody answering, like, a length that was 3.017 was that giving us, you know, nobody was saying it was five inches long, right? Everything was right there in the middle, okay? And what that means is that most of the measurements are the same value. So we must have been using, probably been using a precise tool for measurement. And that means the standard deviation is small, or we could say it another way, we could say we are highly precise, but this is gonna give us a number to actually describe that. Now on the flip side, if we took some measurements and the measurements were all spread out, so we were just all over the board, okay? So like, for instance, if I give a test in my class and whenever I get those results back, I got like five kids at 50% and five kids at the 60 and five kids at the 70, five kids at the 80. You know, those measurements are all spread out. That means that, um, you know, whenever I'm going through, that standard deviation could be way larger. Now, if we're talking about taking measurements um, with like a tool or something, we're probably using some estimation. So maybe I had a tool that only went down to the nearest inch. And so I couldn't really get a better idea of, of how big, you know, a particular piece was. Regardless, this is just a less precise measurement is all it means. It doesn't mean it's worse. It just means it was less precise. So... The rest of this is going to be how to calculate standard deviation. So it's going to be a little bit longer uh, video than I normally do, but we're just going to keep on trucking here. Here we go. Let's say that we have a science class with five plants growing in the classroom. And while you're tracking the growth of each plant, you actually you take a measurement for the height of every single one of those five plants in centimeters. Okay? And the heights are below those five values. Okay. What is the standard deviation for the set of plant height? In other words, can we quantify the precision of that measurement? Okay, and, the, and can we quantify how spread out those, those plant heights are compared to each other? Well, we go to the PLTW formula sheet, and we notice here that there are actually two formulas for standard deviation. That, and both of them look kind of scary. They got a lot of symbols in there that are unknown. So our goal then is to, number one, understand how to use the formula, but two, we got to figure out which formula to use. So we got a nice little flow chart here. Um, hopefully this helps. If we're going to make a prediction with the data that we have, so say, for instance, um, a good example would be I'm going to take the ACT score of just the junior class, and I want to take that and I want to talk about how we think that's going to apply to Liberty North as a whole or to my district as a whole or whatever it is or to the state of Missouri as a whole. Um, we're really making a prediction there. We're, we're taking a small sample of the, uh, of the overall population, and we're going to try to apply that, extrapolate that information to other people. Okay. Um, you know, if I'm going to make a prediction about who's going to win a uh, um, an election, you know, Pew Research isn't going out and, and surveying all 330 plus million people in the United States. They're talking to about a thousand maybe, and they're going to use that data in order to try to gain an understanding of what's going on in the country. So that is definitely a case where the sample standard deviation formula would be used. Now, if that's not the case, if you're not making a prediction, then the next question you have to ask yourself is did you gather data from everybody or in this case did we did we measure every single plant okay did we take every single measurement or are there are five plants in the room and we only measured two that would be a different situation so in our situation since we have five plants in the room we measure all five we're going to use the population standard deviation formula okay that means we're going to use this one so now let's go figure out what these symbols mean and let's uh let's apply it and figure out a number okay so the symbols here, let's start with this. This is the Greek letter mu. We ran out of English letters, so we started using Greek letters instead. Mu is the lowercase m in the Greek alphabet. So mean, mu, starts with an m, makes a lot of sense, okay? So we know how to find the average of five numbers. If you're in a high school engineering class, you've done this at some point in time in the past. That's not going to be too bad. That's a little less scary now. 
X stands for data points. And when we put that little subscript I, that's not a power uh, for you guys in advanced math. That's not like an imaginary number. That's just, it just means individual. We have individual data points that we are going to plug into the formula. So we had five of them in this case, 23, 24, 25, 28, and 30. Those five points will all go into X eventually. Next, we have the Greek letter sigma. That's a capital S from the Greek language, from the Greek alphabet. And that stands for sum. And sum means we're going to add some stuff up. And specifically, we're going to add up all those things in the top of the fraction. Okay. But addition is not going to be that hard. So we have an average so far. We have individual points that we know. And we're going to add some stuff up. So hopefully this is becoming a little bit less mystical at this point in time. N on the bottom stands for the number of data points. In this case, it's how many measurements did you take? So we took five measurements. The number five is going to go into that place in the formula. That's going to be pretty simple, easy. I mean, we can divide by five, not difficult, okay? And all of this, when we put it all together, is going to give us a lowercase sigma, which stands for standard deviation. So that's the little s in the uh, Greek alphabet. That's the lowercase form of the Greek, of the, of the big S on the other side, big sigma. And that's what we're looking for in the end. It's going to give us a number, right? So step one, in order to solve this problem, we need to organize our work. We're going to make a table. It's going to have three columns in it. We have a table uh, at the top. We have a row for um, labels. And then we have all of our data points listed in the first column. Now, order of operations says, and you can pause, by the way, if you need to go back and look at this again, just pause, okay? Unpause when you're ready. Order of operations says, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we better do the stuff in the parentheses first, which means we have to take every single data point, X, and we have to subtract the average. But if we're going to do that, we better know the average. So let's go over and let's find the average of these five numbers. Now, just for kicks, I went ahead and put the formula off the formula sheet in here. And I hope it looks a little bit less mystical now because you know that the Greek letter S stands for sum. We're going to add up, right? Let me move my mouse here. We are going to add up some things. What we are going to add up are each of the individual points. When we have the addition, the sum of those five points, we are going to divide by five, the number of points that we had. That gives us the average, right? So you've been doing average for years. Now you know how to do it with Greek letters, okay? That's the only difference, but hopefully that's not too scary. So let's do the same thing here, ready? We're gonna take them, add them up. They add up to 130. 130 divided by five gives us 26. The average number of these five numbers is 26. So with that in mind then, order of operation, back to the parentheses, okay? We need to take each individual data point and we need to subtract 26. So that's what the table is for. Rather than try to just gunk this up and write it wherever, let's put it in an organized fashion. We're going to take 23 minus 26, 24 minus 26, 25 minus 26, so on and so forth. And that's going to give us a number. Okay, the numbers in red there are what is important. Now, again, pause if you need to. Okay, now let's go back to our formula and see what's next. Okay, I have those numbers, those five values, and it says I need to square them. Next, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the exponent comes next. Okay, so I need to take all five of those numbers, I need to square them, I need to multiply by itself. So there's the third column. Notice, negative 3, when I square it, negative 3 times itself is negative 3 times negative 3, and negative times a negative is a positive. You will always have a positive number here. So I have a positive 9 for the first row, positive 4, 1, 4, 16, so on and so forth. Okay, now, when I have those values, it's time to sum. I'm going to take the sum of all of the squared values. So I'm going to take this last column and the little cell in the bottom right corner was simply a placeholder so I could say this is what the values add up to. When I have the sum of that, those numbers add up to 34, you realize now that the table, this entire table was set up simply so we could figure out what's on the top of the fraction. That's it. We know now that's the number 34. The n, like we said earlier, was pretty easy, right? n is always like, how many numbers do we have? We had five data points, okay? But do notice, okay? Do, oh, it's going to be five, sorry. As a slide off, that's going to be five. But do notice order of operations says the reason that this square root is big, notice that this, the fraction is entirely within the square root, right? We need to keep that in mind. That means we need to do the 34 divided by five. We need to do that first, and then we can take the square root, okay? 
So let's take 34 divided by 5. It turns out to be 6.8. We take the square root of 6.8. It's 2.6077. And we can go ahead and round that to 2.6. You found the standard deviation. Congratulations. So that's the process for standard deviation. Obviously, that's a long process. That was only five numbers. What if I gave you 50 numbers? Holy cow, that's going to take you forever, right? So that's why we have spreadsheets. That's why we're learning how to use Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets right now, okay? Quick note about rounding. I don't know if my class is different than other classes, but if you're in my class, general rule of thumb, do not ever round until you get to the final answer. So you're going to need to find a way to store values in your calculator to avoid rounding. And the other thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to round the final answer only. So how much do you round it? Well, typically what we do is we say whatever number I give you, you're going to go one more decimal place in the original data. So in this case, I gave you five numbers that were whole numbers. So no, de no decimals, right? So we added one decimal for the standard deviation. Okay, so 11-minute video here, and uh, hopefully that makes it a little bit easier. This, again, was an introduction to standard deviation. We will take this in the coming weeks, and we will take this and apply it to all kinds of measurements that we're going to be doing with dial calipers and other things in class. Hopefully this makes sense. If you have any questions, please ask me.